As Fauci steps aside, a new top dog is entering the fray. Director of the Division of Infectious Diseases at the University of Alabama at Birmingham, Jean Marazzo, will become the new head of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases beginning this fall, replacing Dr. Anthony Fauci, who held the position for the last 40 years. Marazzo has been described by critics as fanatical and an outspoken supporter of the COVID lockdown policy and mandates. Check out this supercut from Tech Judge. Please consider wearing a mask when you go out. You don't need to wear one when you're at home. Masks in young people going to school over the age of six. All the things we've been talking about, mask wearing, hand hygiene, and social distancing. Masks have contributed to the control of this pandemic in other communities. Even mask wearing, except when you're eating, you can prevent it with very good masks. The three basic rules, wear a mask, make sure you wash your hands frequently or use hand sanitizer, and keep your distance. All right, the lady loves masks. Um, but the real relevant thing right now is um, we, we need to know, uh, she needs to be grilled about whether she supports doing the kind of um, research spending that we are all concerned, many of us are concerned, led to the creation of the pandemic? Is she going to be for transparency with respect to these grants and the decision-making process and proximal origins and all that stuff? Where, you know, it's the mandates and lockdowns are thankfully no longer in effect. So I, I, I care more now about getting to the bottom of the health, the federal health research apparatuses, um, whether they uh, really drop the ball on all that stuff. So that's what she needs to answer questions about. Yeah, I think that anybody who's hired by any administration should speak to those issues, um, especially since, you know, obviously Fauci is not a Biden era phenomenon. He has been at NIH for 40 years under multiple yes. administrations. And he, at the beginning of the pandemic, had a very cozy relationship with Donald Trump um, before everything went partisan and sideways. So of course that's true of any new hire, given what we now know about the likely origins of COVID. Um, and given that, you know, Obama, as we've discussed at, on the show, had the wisdom to put the kibosh on some of this funding in a way that seems in retrospect very uh, yeah. advisable. Um, it is interesting though, that despite there being these, I, I would agree, more significant issues with respect to funding of gain and of function research, the outrage that I observed on Twitter did seem largely about the masking, which is an interest, it's an interesting position given, as you said, the mandates are over. And I'm not sure when those supercuts were, when the videos and the supercuts were filmed, was it early in the pandemic when there was a broad consensus about the, the hand, you know, the, the utility of hand washing and masking that went back and forth on, but it's- I mean, we, a lot of that stuff we, People were trying on. to do what they could people do. People were washing a, their groceries at the beginning. Right, well, hand washing is yeah. a good hygiene well, practice good that it should not be that controversial. But that, um, what was I gonna say? I mean, was that a high quality mask hanging, dangling, dangling from her ear? I don't no, know it doesn't. It, it doesn't look it like, like it. Like it and I, I feel very strongly that the real sin here is not advising masking, but conflating low quality cloth masks, telling people to take two scrunchies behind their ears and thread a bandana through it, um, were going to be useful. And that was a conflation, that, sorry, the, yeah. the, the health officials said that that yeah. was good enough, that yeah, don't be terrible. too particular about what mask you wear. You gotta, you, just any wet mask is good. Yeah, which is why it's so important to be clear that the high quality masks are the ones that are really effective. And I think there's some questions about why it is that the government has not been playing that up more and offered free high quality masks to the public, many of whom are low income workers who don't have the ability to social distance themselves and work at home and who are exposed still to this virus, which continues to have negative health, health outcomes. Nobody should be exposed to these kinds of things and should be able to protect themselves, especially now that there are no mandates in place. It all is about protecting oneself. And should there be more pu public um, awareness about the utility of high quality masks and being able to do so? And in talking about low quality masks and completing them with high quality masks, I think has led to broad distrust of mas masking in general and a broad inaccurate feeling that they're generally speaking useless. Right. Well, again, for the, I mean, they were of, I think of 
I mean, there's there's debate about how useful certain kinds of masks were at certain stages of the pandemic. Obviously, the initial strain of COVID was less infectious than the subsequent stages. Um, so I know some public health officials, um, like Dr. Leanna Wen, changed their mind about how urgent and important it is to wear masks um, when confronted by new variants that, in her view, may make the possibility of largely preventing yourself from getting the, the infection um, no longer a, a feasible public health goal. Wait a minute, you're saying the change in variant affected the effectiveness of masks? Certainly it did. What's the argument there? That the new variant is like they smaller much, and more porous? No, there was much more infectious. There, there, there's a higher viral load if you are infected and contagious, and there's more it, in the it, air? It's much more I mean, it, that's, uh, that's not a controversial statement. The subsequent variants were like eight times or ten times more infectious. Than but a the, mask, they had, a mask is a barrier, so it's not. Well, unless, it's not a perfect barrier. Well, that's part of the issue. Depending on the quality of the, of the mask, right. they can get very close to being very, very good. But those differences and being fit for a mask as opposed to just wearing it off the shelf also affects the uh, the efficacy of the mask. There's a lot of things that go into it, but. That's a little bit like saying, depending on the mask, like if you're saying there's more viral particles in the air from one strain than another, I can see how that, on a percentage basis, is going to make it less likely, more likely for you to get I, infected. I don't know if that's, but that's not an argument against wearing a mask. I don't know if that's it's still the lowering reason it's your, more. I don't know. I don't know what the biological reason for the subsequent strains being more infectious is. I don't know if it's because the the. I, I th my understanding was because the viral particles are more. They, like they just attack your immune system more effectively once you've once inhaled it gets them or something. through the mask. Yeah, yeah. All right. I'm, I'm not. I'm not sure about that. Interestingly, so Dr. Morazzo doesn't need um, any uh, Senate confirmation, any approval. Uh, interesting. Another another uh, nomination. Uh, uh, Monica Ber Bertagnoli. She's actually being held up right now uh, because Bernie Sanders doesn't want to hold a hearing for her until the White House commits to stronger action lowering uh, drug prices. He's Love doing to his see. own. Uh, <laughs> well, but isn't that what everybody's mad at? Um, uh, Tommy Tuberville for holding up some confirmations for some personal policy grievance or something? Isn't that similar? Look, if you think Tuberville's desire to restrict health access for our service women, um, reproductive health needs for our service women is equivalent to Bernie Sanders trying to lower prescription drug prices for all Americans, well, that's your value. But I think a lot of people are mad at Tuberville because he has a very fringe political position here and he is holding up the these kind of uh, uh, military promotions and the like, and Bernie Sanders is holding up an appointment of a position I mean, that's right. long the, been empty. The agency has an acting director. It is proceeding yeah, with in its order work. to prevent people from dying because they can't afford their prescription medicine. Well, as an example of the pushback that may come towards Dr. Marazzo, last March, Senator Rand Paul introduced an amendment to eliminate Dr. Anthony Fauci's position as the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases and replace it with three separate national research institutes. He said in a statement, we've learned a lot over the past two years, but one lesson in particular is that no one person should be deemed dictator in chief. No one person should have unilateral authority to make decisions for millions of Americans. And Dr. Fauci's authority here was extremely vast by virtue of how long he'd been in the position. Yet you mentioned earlier the pause on gain-of-function research that uh, President Obama implemented. Uh, it had some exceptions, unfortunately, carved into it. That, and Dr. Fauci has testified, and it, it came before his desk, that he was like, yep, that's an exception. We'll keep doing this. We'll keep doing that. He can't remember exactly which projects he might have signed off on or with the papers where they are. Very convenient. Um, the the I think the need to prevent um, uh, well, although I don't know if it's, if it's one agency broken to three agencies if they still have the same philosophy that they should be shielded from all accountability and continue to fund and advise um, dangerous research that many others in the health community think is fraught then it, w it doesn't matter if it's one agency or three but um, I take uh, Senator Paul's point yeah it'll in be interesting to see what there is to really be done about it some. You know, people, administrative, I, I, I don't know, like, I, I know that you're coming from the perspective of, well, then there should be no one in charge and laissez-faire everything and we'll all just live in our castles. But, like, most people think well. that there needs to be some kind of public health apparatus. They want folks, they want somebody with some expertise in disease management to be offering guidance and advice. 
Fauci says that so many of the things that he offered up were not, he didn't have the ability to force anybody to do anything. He, he offered advisory opinions that have a lot of influence because people who are not experts don't really want in the middle of a pandemic, pandemic to say, oh, my independent thought and feeling about how this should go should rule over someone who has medical expertise. And I, you know, the effect is that those advisory opinions had a lot of sway, but I'm not sure given that he was not actually a dictator and that his opinions did not actually impose themselves on the choices that were made by various states, what to really do about that uh, outside of getting rid of the CDC and these um, institutions entirely and letting it be each man for himself. Mm. All right. We'll have more rising right after this.